Hello everybody and welcome back to this new video. Today we're going to be talking about the imposter box from CyberSec Labs. This is a Windows box and let's jump into it. So in our nmap scan, we will see that we have a lot of RPC ports open. Now RPC stands for Remote Procedure Call and that's pretty much a service by Microsoft uh, for different machines to talk to each other, right? Um, and in um, RPC in a pen testing env environment, we would want to check, hey, maybe can we uh, log in to this service without credentials, so a user without a password, so dash n stands for no password, and then the IP address. But that's not going to be the case in this case. So then we also have port 139, port 445, those are SMB ports. And these you can also check, can I log in without credentials, and I've done that in different videos. Um, moving on, we have a lot more RPC ports, there's a lot of them, and those aren't really interesting for now. Then we have port 3389, and that's RDP, which is Remote Desktop Protocol. So this is uh, where you, when you would have credentials and the user would uh, have access to Remote Desktop, we could actually get a desktop as that user instead of just a shell. But that's only useful when you have credentials and a user that's in that group. Um, then we have 5985, and this is the port that Evil WinRM uses. Um, so this is a, is a WS man port, uh, which is also useful when you have credentials, but not for us right now. And then we have port 8080 here, which is an HTTP port running Wing FTP server. So currently, this is definitely the most interesting port, uh, this high port. Uh, I don't usually look at very closely at high ports on Windows, so currently this 8080 port is the most interesting port to look at. So let's uh, jump into that. So since, this, since it's HTTP, we can go on the web, just add colon H8080 to it, and we'll go here, and we see, okay, we have this uh, login page for Wing FTP. Now, a couple things you could try is uh, maybe guess the credentials, admin, admin, and that fails. Uh, you could read up about this uh, about this uh, FTP server. You could check uh, if there's any vulnerable versions. But eventually, you wouldn't really find anything. Um, but default on, on default, the account name is admin, and then we could guess the password. Now, first, I try some obvious passwords like admin, admin, uh, admin, password, password. And we'll see that this, in this case, this works. So that's something you always want to try, try those low hanging branches because sysadmins can be really dumb, can forget this easy stuff, can pick very bad passwords. So try admin, admin, uh, admin passwords, stuff like that. So then we have access to this wing FTP server. And from here, there's a couple things we can do. So first of all, in administration, we have this console and this console runs Lua, okay? Then we have a uh, server here, we have logs and stuff like that. But currently this console is the most interesting thing. Um, so let's see if we can uh, execute OS commands from here. So we can do OS execute in Lua and then we can do cmd.exe-cdir. That's not gonna give us any output but isn't gonna give us any error messages either. If we type help, we can see a lot of stuff as well. But it seems like we have code execution here because that does, didn't give us any errors. So let's see if we can take that further and use that to get a shell. So for that, I'm going to go back to hack tricks and then on uh, up top here, you have shells for Windows and I'm going to use this uh, uh, re registry service 32 and they have a nice Metasploit module here that we can use. So let's use multi-script web delivery. in Metasploit, so we can do use that one, I'll make this bigger, we can do show options, see what it needs from us. So it needs a server host, so that's a local server, then a server port. It needs an L host, so set L host is going to be ton zero, which is my interface running the OpenVPN, and then a local port. So now if we run this, We'll notice we have issues with my local address 8080 already being in use, so let's change server port to be 8081, run that again. Uh, and now we see it wants to execute Python 
uh, and that's because we have our target at Python interpreter reverse TCP, which I don't want to have. So let's set payload to be uh, Windows slash interpreter reverse TCP. So now if we run this again, oh, and uh, we also have our exploit target uh, on ID three. So I think we can do uh, targets target help uh, targets. Uh, show target. I know there's a there's a command that um, that can uh, give us all the options for target. Oh, we can do show targets. Ah, there we go. Show targets, right? So we can do P Python PHP, but we want to do this uh, registry service 32. So let's set target to three and run this again. And now we fail to connect to port 444, so let's set, set L port to 4445. Run that again. Okay, here we go. So now we have uh, this command that we need to run. So let's copy that. And let's uh, run this over here. But then we'll notice, oh, we can't, we can't paste here. So that's not really nice. So let's get burp going. So I use foxy proxy here to easily switch between proxies, but burp is set up to be a proxy to localhost port 8080. So now if I type anything here, we can catch that in burp because our intercept is on. We can send that to repeater. And then from the repeater, we have our command here. So now we want to execute this, but we want to do os.execute. Uh, have this between quotes. Uh, and we want to do cmd.exe backslash c. And then have this between quotes again. Let's send that. And we notice that we don't get any response. So let's try sending help maybe. Okay, help does work. Oh, and this worked as well. In the meanwhile, we got something back here. Um, but, so we got a request, oh, okay, it's still going. So that worked, actually, our first command just took a while. So it uh, it came back to our web server, it got a request for our file here that Metasploit created, and now it has opened a Metroplot session. So now we can do sessions, it's going to show us the sessions, so we see we have one active session as Leon. So we can do sessions dash i for interactive and then the ID of the session, which is one. And here we can go into a shell, for example. And now we have a shell as lean. So now we want to start enumerating as lean, see how we can get to system. So one of the things I always run when enumerating on Windows is who am I slash priv. And we see that we have a lot of privileges and, and it's not us usually that you have all of these. And one of these that's going to stick out is the SE impersonate privilege because we impersonate a client after authentication. Now, I already did this in one of my other videos. Um, I believe it was. Um, well, if, if you don't know how to do it, you can go uh, on Hectrix and you can use Juicy Potato to do this as well. But for this video, we're going to do something different. We are going to use incognito here, which is something you can use in Meterpreter. So it's a standalone applica application that allows us to impersonate user tokens. So we're going to go back into a Meterpreter and then we're going to say uh, load incognito. So that's going to load this extension. And now we can do help and we can see here in incognito the things we can do. So for example, we can list tokens and that's going to list tokens available as our current user. So let's do that. See if we have any tokens that we can impersonate, uh, list tokens. And then it says we have to say dash U list tokens by unique username. Okay. What happens if we do dash G? Okay. That's going to list tokens by group. Okay. But we want to become um, anti-authority system. So let's list them by username. Uh, so we see that there's a token available, sorry, for that. Uh, we see that there's a token available for anti-authority system. 
So we're gonna be we're gonna wanna become him which is the administrator. So let's see, then we can you do impersonate token. So we can do impersonate token. Let's see what we need to supply here. And now we need to supply a token. So that was anti authority system. Uh, that token is not found. Was it a backslash? And that worked. And now we have successfully impersonated that user. So now if we go back into a shell, we can see that if we type who am I, we are currently anti-authority anti system. So we have successfully pawned this box. So that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I think this box was a very good box. Um, uh, the only part that I, that I maybe uh, was a bit hard or a bit uh, not easy to find was the credentials for our wing FTP server. But all in all, uh, we, we definitely got a lot of Windows practice out of this box, which is which is very good because dealing with Windows shells and stuff can be di difficult. Uh, so it's good to have a lot of practice with it. Um, but if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will see you back in another video.